All right, welcome back. So in this video, we are going to cover the saddle joint. Now, this is our last video. So we have already covered all of the other types of joints that you would need to know before you go into the inblex. So if you've missed any of those videos, I'd encourage you go back and watch them. But in this video, we are going to cover the saddle joints. So let me go ahead and write that up there for us. Saddle joint. And the two that we're going to cover today is going to be the trapezio metacarpal joint, as well as the sternoclavicular joint. Now, a saddle joint is going to be where two surfaces of bones are going to articulate. Okay, and it's going to have a convex surface and a concave surface. So how do we know the difference? Let me write that up there for us real quick. Convex and concave. Now the way that I remember how to distinguish the two is the cave. <laughs> it's easier for me to remember a cave, right? A cave, you go into a cave. So concave is going to be like this. I can go into the cave, which means is the convex surface is going to fit within that concave surface. And so that helps me remember that the concave, I can go inside that concave surface, right? And so a saddle joint is going to be where a concave surface articulates with the convex surface to create a joint. And we have two that we are going to cover today. Now, before we go any further, I would encourage you to check out this worksheet that I have on Etsy as well as Patreon. I'll leave the links in the description below to this worksheet. And it says for the saddle joint, it is a convex surface that fits within the concave surface of another, allowing for a wider range of movement, which we will cover here in just a few. So the very first one we have is the trapezial metacarpal joint. Trape Remember I said the O, right? The O is doing what? It's bringing two word parts together, right? So we have the trapezio, which is going to be the, right over here, trapezium, which is going to be a carpal that is within our wrist, and the metacarpal is going to be a metacarpal. And it's specifically the metacarpal in our thumb. So the trapezium is going to articulate with that metacarpal. Now the trapezium is going to have the concave surface, meaning that it's gonna be the one that caves in. And the metacarpal is going to have the convex surface. So, for example, it is going to look like this. Now you can see from that picture that that trapezium, that small carpal, is caved in. And then the metacarpal, which is the thumb's metacarpal, is going to have the convex surface. Now it allows for a wider range of movement. What are those movements? Well, we can do flexion, we can do extension, we can do adduction, remember bringing it back to that midline, and then we can do abduction, okay? Now, that also, so flexion and extension, adduction and abduction allows for circumduction, right? So we can actually twirl our thumbs, we can do circular movements. Now, doesn't a ball and socket do circumduction? Yes, it does. However, a saddle joint is limited, right? It's not like a ball and socket joint where we can do a wide range of movements with a ball and socket. However, with flexion and excuse me, with flexion and extension and adduction and abduction, those movements combined allow for us to do circumduction, okay? So I would encourage you to make sure you understand that as well. Now there's one more movement that's very important that I would encourage you to make sure you understand and that is opposition. So it's when you take your thumb and you bring your pinky together. And one of my former students mentioned that the way that they remembered that is it looks like an O, right? So opposition, O, with your hand, all right? 
And so make sure you understand that the trapezium metacarpal is going to be that thumb saddle joint and the thumb. And it is where the trapezium, the carpal, is going to articulate with that metacarpal of the thumb. All right? Now the next saddle joint that we have is the sternoclavicular joint. Now, here's that O. It's bringing two word parts together. We have the sternoclavicular. So it's the sternum. But more importantly, what part of the sternum, right? The manubrium. What is the manubrium? That's gonna be that upper part of the sternum. Okay, so we have that little upper part, then we have that body of the sternum, and then the xiphoid process at the bottom, if you remember. Now that manubrium is going to have, or it's going to create, the bone is going to have that concave surface. So it's concave, and then the clavicular part is going to be the what? The clavicle. But more specifically, the medial aspect of that clavicle. Okay, so we have the sternum, the manubrium, and then we have that clavicle, but more specifically, we go medially, and then I can feel there's that clavicle, the medial aspect of it, and there's my sternum. And so the sternum, the manubrium, is gonna create that concave surface, and that medial aspect of the clavicle is going to articulate, the convex surface is going to articulate there with that manubrium or the sternum. And so that is going to look like this, all right? Now, this joint is going to allow for a significant amount of movement. Just like the thumb, we can do... Now, I want you to do me a favor. So you can actually feel this movement because it's a little more tricky, right? I can show you on my thumb. You can see that. Easy, right? So you're going to have to palpate that clavicle, find that sternum, and just put your finger right there where it articulates, all right? Now, that specific joint, the sternoclavicular joint, allows for... Now, I just want you to move your shoulder. Keep your arm down, but just your shoulder, right? So it allows for elevation, depression... I can already feel those moving. I can feel that joint moving. Moving. It allows for protraction. It allows for retraction. And it also allows for circumduction. So if I lift my hand above my head, I can feel that movement taking place at that sternoclavicular joint. So, I would encourage you. I know that's a lot of information. Saddle joints are kind of a tough joint to remember. But what helps me is the concave. If I know that it's a cave, I know that it's going to look like this and that I can go inside, which means that convex surface is going to fit within that concave surface. Then the thumb joint is also going to be the trapezium metacarpal, but also it can be called a carpo metacarpal joint, but more specifically trapezium metacarpal because it's the trapezium, that carpal, which is going to articulate with the metacarpal of the thumb. And then we also have the sternoclavicular joint, which is going to be the sternum, but more specifically the manubrium of the sternum, which is the concave surface, and it's going to articulate with the convex surface of that medial aspect of that clavicle. Now, I know that is a lot, guys, but I would encourage you to make sure you know just enough information and have just a basic understanding of all the types of the joints. I've already created all six of the type of joints videos. We've covered ball and socket, gliding, hinge, pivot, condyloid, and now today, saddle. And so I would encourage you to get and make sure you have a good understanding of this information. And if you need a little more help, I'd encourage you to check out this worksheet which is on Etsy, as well as Patreon, and as well as the back of it, which asks you various questions to test your understanding of the information that is on the front. And just make sure that you understand this information really, really well before you go into the inbox. all right? Now, I also need your help with one more thing. Since this is the last video of the six videos of the diathrotic joints, 
I want to know what you would like for me to cover in our next YouTube videos. All right. Now, go ahead and leave that in the comments down below. But I'd also encourage you, if you're needing a little bit more help, check out my Patreon page because I have just a ton of information and I spent a lot of time making worksheets, Inflex Review courses, study guides, live lessons, just a ton of stuff. Practice questions, on, there's a lot of stuff on Patreon and just hours and hours and hours and hours that I spent creating videos, worksheets, etc. on there. And so if you're needing more help, dive into Patreon as well, all right? Y'all have a wonderful week ahead and I will see you in the next video. Y'all take care.